So we're in chapter three now, and uh, this is really you know, what it's all about. It's the start of what it's all about. Um, just a, a a quick little history. I don't even know if it qualifies as a history, but uh, this is uh, supposedly uh, I think an Arabic word that uh, is found in writings concerning the ideas of algebra, right? the, the algebra of, of, uh, of long, long ago. Uh, and this is one of the stories of the, the origins of our word algebra. And uh, supposedly this word means restoration. And that's, that's what algebra is. There's this unknown thing and we restore it. We restore its value. We figure out what its value is. Okay. Uh, and we do this for a long time. This is what algebra is about. We represent an unknown quantity as a letter, and then we figure out what that unknown quantity would have to be. That's what it's all about. All right. um, so that's what we're starting today. We're going to start solving equations. Probably equations you already know how to solve, some simple. But we'll start out simple and we'll just progress from there. Uh, that a lot of times is how it works. Present you with a fairly easy thing and then step up the difficulty little by little uh, so that you can follow along all along the way. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is what's called a one-step equation. Just one thing is needed in order to restore the unknown value. We don't know what it is, but there's just one thing that we need to do to figure out what it is. Okay. And there's something really important that I want you to grasp. <coughs> if you can fully grasp this idea, uh, it'll help you out a lot. You won't ask me lots of questions uh, about, uh, hey, can I do this, should I do this, and that kind of thing. Uh, and if you do, then I can just remind you of this thing, of this uh, this concept that I want you to understand today. Okay? Before we move on to anything about solving equations, I, I want you to um, put aside any thoughts that, like, oh, yeah, I already know that. I don't have to listen to you say these things. Okay? I want you to fully hear what I'm saying. All right, so it's, it's all about this guy right here. It's that symbol. It's the equal symbol. Signifies equality between two things. And if we can remind ourselves of that and be conscious of that all the time, that this equal sign means this thing is equal to this thing, they are exactly the same thing, then all the other stuff we do in algebra uh, just follows logically. Okay? Um, so to, to help you see exactly what this is, what this means, I'm going to uh, make that smaller. So, what do we have here? The scale, right? How does the scale work? Bryce? If you erase something on one side and see if it's substantial or something you put on the other side? Yeah. So, I think where this is classically thought of being used is in uh, the ancient marketplace where you would weigh. You put a, a certain amount of, say, the like grain or whatever on one side, you would put a, a known uh, weight on the other side. And then you would know if you put five pounds over here and you had a bunch of grain over here, that this grain was five pounds. Right? That's the beginning of algebra, as I could imagine. Okay. So now we just, uh, rather than having scales, we write equations. Um, but we can represent this equation with this scale. So we have here a block, a block of an unknown weight. We don't know how much it weighs. And here we have a block that we know weighs one. Okay, and we'll just worry about those right now. We'll talk about these uh, later. Okay, so can, come, so can someone come up and represent this equation using the scale? And just grab this, and move it around, and put it on the one side or the other. Someone willing to come up and do that? Look, they could do it if I made them do it. They just don't want me to do it. Mm -hmm. You don't know how? You don't know. Okay, 
be honest, raise your hand if you are not sure what how you would do this. Okay. Well, then let's let's get started on it. There's this equation, x plus five equals eight. Did you? I pointed that out, right? Okay. All right. So we got that equation, x plus five equals eight. Uh, we got an unknown quantity plus a known quantity equals some other known quantity. All right. Now, keep in mind something that I told you earlier. I know that you know x is three. I know you know that. Okay. That's not what I'm trying to help you with. Okay. If you if you just stay in the, the, the mindset of, I know that I have to add 3 to 5 to get 8, and so x is 3, um, and you don't um, practice these good habits early on, uh, then when the equations become impossible to just say, well, I know what x has to be, then you won't have been practicing the skills that you needed in order to solve those more complicated equations. Okay? And we may even come across one of those equations for you today. Fractions in there, and dividing, multiplying, and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so uh, and sometimes the answer for x will be a fraction. So that's something to think about. Well, on this side of the scale of the equation, we have an unknown quantity. Right. We also have five things. Okay. Five ones, five units. It could be five pounds or five ounces. It could represent five miles, it could represent five hours, it could represent five of anything. And on this side, we have eight of those things. There's four, five, six, seven, and eight. And since I input the equation x plus five equals eight, then this knows that one unknown quantity plus five known units should be equal to eight known units. So when you're manipulating an equation, you want to solve for the unknown quantity, you want to isolate the unknown quantity. Uh, we just want to get the, the scale so that what we have on one side is the unknown quantity, and on the other side we have a quantity that we know, a number, and then we can say, look, the, the scales are balanced, they're flat, and so that unknown thing must be equal to this known thing. Okay? So if you, if you didn't have an equation, and, and we weren't thinking about subtraction or addition or that kind of stuff, and this was just physically in front of you, and you wanted to figure out how much this guy was worth, what would you do? Subtract five from eight. Uh, just subtract five from eight. those things from both sides. And if we took five things from here and five things from here, five things we know are equal to each other, five of these are equal to five of these, then we won't upset the balance of the scale. And you don't have to constantly be thinking of the analogy of a scale, but you, you do want to keep in mind that what we're saying is this side is the same as this side. And what we do to one side is going to affect the other side unless we do the same thing to the other side as well. Okay, Does that make sense? So um, just this has been through experience. I've worked with lots of students of all different ages and experiences, and lots of them don't seem to understand why they do the same thing to both sides. They do the same thing to both sides because they've been told to, and it's just rote memorization. The reason we do it is not because we're told not to, not because it's magic, not because it's what we're supposed to do, but because it's an equation. Both sides are the same, and if we change one side, Without changing the other in the same way, then we upset that balance. And now both sides are not the same. Okay? So physically, I guess virtually physically, we took five things off of one side and took five things off of the other side. Okay? Um, mathematically, what how would we represent that in this equation? How do we represent having taken five things off of both sides? You mean like when you're trying to solve like the x plus five? Mm -hmm. You'd subtract five underneath the five, and then subtract five underneath the eight, mm -hmm. and then bring the x down, x equals three. Right. 
is n 5 minus 5 is 0, and 8 minus 5 is 3, and there we've solved the equation. Okay. So we'll clear this off. And that, that gets the ball rolling. We see that there's this, uh, this equality between both sides. We want to do the same thing to both sides. Otherwise, it's going to get off. When I only took 5 away from one side, the other side got heavier, and now they weren't equal. Say that they're the same. Um, let's see. Um, Three times the quantity x equals nine. How do we represent that on the scale? Three of the one blocks and then the x. Um, uh, let's talk about like a three times four. What does three times four mean? This number four, right, there's four things, is adding itself three times, right? There's a group, and there's a group, and there's a group of four. There's three groups of four. And we count them all, and we have 12, okay? Well, the same thing works for three times x, right? This is three x plus three times x, okay? So just like we're adding four and four and four, <coughs> Here we're adding x and x and x. So 3x is just an x and another x and another x, all added together. So if we come back to the scale, how would we represent that on the left side of the scale? Danielle. Let's put 3x here. Put 3x. So you got an x and another x and another x. And that's what this is saying. There's three of these. There's three of these. Three of the fours, three of the x's, three of the whatever that you have there, whatever the variable is. Right? So over there we have three of the x's, so we know three x's is equal to nine. So we'll put nine of these things over here. So we know three x's is equal to nine units. How do we figure out what uh, one x is? Yeah, uh, you divide by three. Physically, what you would do, you would you would say, I, I know that three of these is equal to nine of these. I only want to know what one of them is. So if I, if I get rid of these guys, what I just did is cut this down to a third of what it was. Right? If I just want to know what one of those was, I want to know what one third of that side was worth, so I need to look at one third of this. So we can cut this into three pieces and. The original was three x's was equal to nine units. So we want to compare, uh, if there's three of them, we want to compare one third of this side to one third of this side. So we want to find one third of that side and one third of this side. Divide both sides by three. We would take the equation. Three x equals nine. 
divide both sides by 3, because we want to know what one third of this side is versus one third of this side. And then we get down to where 1x is equal to 3 units. Uh, yeah. Are there any questions about that? Because if all if the equation is like this is limited, it can't it can't do too many, it can't stack too many things high. Um, so we'll come back to these regular equations. The thing I want you to see though is if if an equation is is uh, if a scale is an analogy for an equation, uh, the reason we do things to both sides is we need to keep it balanced. Okay. And whatever that thing is, whatever it looks like, whether we're adding something to both sides, subtracting, uh, we could multiply both sides, divide both sides. Uh, beyond that, we can square both sides, take the square root of both sides, take the logarithm of both sides, take uh, the, the sine or the cosine of both sides. We can do anything we want as long as we do it to both sides because this thing is the same as this other thing. Okay. And so one third of this thing should be equal to one third of this thing. And on and on it goes. Okay. Um, so I, I imagine I, I'm pretty sure I will still get the question, can I add three to both sides? Or something like that. And I'll say, of course, it's an equation. You can do whatever you want to both sides. Because if you add three to one side and add three to the other side, all you've done is add equal amounts to equal things, and so the results are equal, right? Um, so let's see. I'll just have you do number 13 and see how you guys do with that. Negative 2 equals n minus 6. So if we take our unknown quantity and subtract 6 from it, we get negative 2. Um, and we may be able to just use a mental math and say, well, if I want to subtract 6 from something and get negative 2, then I'd have to start with 4. Okay? And for a while, that's a, a good check to be, to be able to, to look at it with mental math and to solve it using the, the concepts of algebra and, and um, doing the same thing to both sides. But always think that what you want to do, what you're trying to do, your goal here, is to get a single value of the unknown quantity, right? one of an n, or one of an x, or one of whatever it is. You're going to get a single unknown value on one side, and then everything else on the other side. 
whatever it is, okay? And for a long time, that'll just be numbers, right? Sometimes we'll have other unknowns, like I said, we'll have x and we'll have y. Okay. But for now, we just have some numbers. So we've got one unknown quantity involved with some numbers. Um, so using uh, mathematical operations, how can I eliminate this negative 6 so that the, the, the new thing is equal to n, right? The new thing is just n by itself. Sarah? Add 6. So if on this side I add 6, okay? I'm really adding n plus this amount. And what's this amount worth? Zero. Zero. Negative 6 plus 6, right? Something plus its opposite is 0. So over here I have n plus 0, n plus nothing. So we've eliminated that thing. <coughs> But we also need to add 6 on this side, of course, because if we've added 6 over here and not over there, we made this side heavier than that side, where they used to just be equal to each other. So we add 6 to both sides, and negative 6 minus 2, or 6 minus 2, or negative 2 plus 6 is 4. Well, n plus 0, it doesn't change anything if you add 0 to a number. So n plus 0 is just n, and n is 4. Um, something that I saw, some misunderstandings that I saw. Um, we'll go back to the beginning. Okay. I saw this, adding 2 to both sides, which, can you add 2 to both sides? We just, did, we just solved the problem and we did it by adding 6 to both sides. Can we add 2 to both sides? Yes, of course, we can do anything we want as long as it's the same thing to both sides. As long as we maintain that equality, whether we put two things on, on either side or 50,000 things on either side or divide both sides by two and look at half of each side, like all of those things, as long as we do them equally to both sides, both sides will still be equal. Right? So what we can do is anything that does not upset the balance of this equation. Okay? Um, and then this was the next thing that was written down. But if we, if we take it slowly, take it step by step, we'll see what actually happens when we add 2 to both sides. Okay? We're going to add negative 2 uh, to 2. So it's negative 2 plus 2. Okay, that's good. Good. Thanks for participating. Right. And on this side, what do we have now? What, what is on this side? Good job. Four plus eight. What's that? Four plus two equals six. Four plus two, on this side is four plus two equals six? Where's the four? What? Oh, I meant six. Six? It's two plus four equals six. Wait, what am I doing? Sorry, never mind. I think it might be substituting the four for n. We're pretending like we don't know that yet. Oh, okay. Uh, I can move this over. Okay, that might help. Slide it over there. I can put it right there. Negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. Okay, so n minus 4 is on this side. Well, this is still fine. This is still true. This equation is still balanced. Okay. The, the value of n can still be restored. Um, but what we have is that n minus 4 is, is nothing. We had n and we subtracted 4 from it, we'd have nothing left. So how do we get it so that the equation says n is this? We add 4 to each side. If we add 4 here, negative 4 plus 4 is 0. That cancels out. And we add 4 to this side, we get 4 is equal to n. 4 is equal to n. And if we go back, you know, if, if we hadn't thought of that already, then we go back and we realize, of course, if I want to subtract 4 from something and get nothing, I would have to subtract it from 4. Nothing else would work. If I want to subtract 6 from something and get negative 2, that's something that's have been 4. But we do still want to go through the practice of doing the same thing to both sides, doing a mathematical operation to both sides. All right.
that down. And show me what you got. Don't just use mental math. Don't tell me I know what G has to do. We all know G is 4. So you show me what you do. Uh, great. So in this equation, on this side we have five g's. We only want to know what one g is worth. We have five times too much on one side. So if we have five times as much as what we want, what we want is one fifth of that. How do you get one fifth of something? Divide by five. So if you divide by five, let me let me show you what's happening here, okay? All right, so we're taking 5g, we're dividing by 5. So what we, we could write is 5 fifths times g over 1, right? We multiplied fractions before, and we know that we could write, write it this way, and 5 times g over 5 times 1 would be 5g over 5. Right? So that equals, well, of course that's 4. But what's 5 divided by 5? It's 1. So now what we have is 1 times g, Four. And what happens when you multiply something by one? Anything? You change it? No. Anything times one is just itself. So g is equal to four. So the, when we divide on both sides, or we add on both sides, or subtract on both sides, it's not magic. It's not uh, exactly cancellation. I don't even really like that word, cancellation, because it it's too. Not specific. It's too ambiguous, and people get confused by it. Uh, what we're doing is we are dividing five by five, and that is the number one. Five divided by five is one, and now we're multiplying one times g, and all that's left is g. 
Um, using mathematical operations.
Right. Um, so even about here, I, I see a, a fair number of people. Who I, I, I imagine you guys have solved equations similar to this, similar in difficulty, similar uh, in its arrangement. Um, or at least a, a good number of you have solved equations like this, maybe in pre-algebra or whatever. Please stop talking. Um, so you know what you're supposed to do, but you don't quite get why it works or how it works. And then as we move on, uh, you'll be kind of stuck back here where you don't even quite understand what's happening here. Okay. So I saw pretty much everybody that I, that I can remember multiplied both sides by two. Um, and you I imagine because multiplication is the inverse of division, and if you divide by two and you multiply by two, then they cancel each other out, right? Um, but in talking to some of you, several of you, uh, it's clear that the full understanding is not there. Okay, so let's do this problem together. Uh, if we multiply both sides by two, let's let's really on this side. Nobody had any trouble, I got 28. Let's talk about really what's going on over here, okay? So if I take m over two times two, I could write this as m over two times two over one. We're, um, we're multiplying these together like we would multiply any fractions together. Okay. Um, we could write this as two m over two. Or we could recognize this as 2 over 2 times m over 1. We could rearrange a little bit. Okay. What we want to see is happening is that 2 is dividing 2. And that 2 divided by 2 is what? Is what? What is 2 divided by 2? 4. 2 divided by 2? 1. It's 1. It's 1. And what is 1 times a thing? So 1 times m is m. 28 times 28. Um, yeah. I know that, that you know you're supposed to multiply by 2 because you're dividing by 2, and if you multiply by 2, it cancels out. But if you don't quite get understand what's actually happening mathematically, the, the, uh, the arithmetic of it, if you pause, Allow yourself to absorb that knowledge. Okay? Allow that to be explained to you. Allow that to, to take root. Okay? So when other stuff comes in where we're, divided, we're multiplying both sides by 5x or something weird like that, you still get what's going on because it's all the same stuff. It's all arithmetic. It's all uh, one thing divided by itself is one and uh, or similar concepts like that. Keep in mind that when we're solving an equation, which sounds pretty um, nebulous, those words, there's a couple words in there, and, and if we're not sure exactly what they mean, then they don't mean anything. Okay. So we're solving an equation. We're taking an equation that has something that's not known. Right? Usually that's something that needs to be solved, something that we don't know. We have a problem that needs to be solved, but we don't know what needs to happen. So we solve an equation by figuring out what that unknown quantity is worth. We need to restore the value of that unknown quantity. Right. Well, the unknown quantity is x. I want to know what x is. 
I don't want to know what 8 fifths of x is. Right? That doesn't interest me. What I'm interested in is what is one of the x's worth. Right? So I either want to figure out what one times x is worth or what x plus zero is worth. Right? I want to, I want to counteract the multiplication or the division, addition, or subtraction so that what I'm adding is nothing. Or what I'm multiplying by is one. So that when I multiply by one or I add zero, I just have x. In this case, you can see we're not adding anything to x. We're not subtracting anything from x. We, don't, we probably don't want to make it so that it's x plus zero. We want to make it so that it's one times x. So how can I, using some, some mathy stuff, cause this to be one times x rather than eight fifths times x? Multiply eight fifths by reciprocal. Okay, let's let's go one concept back from that. Which is, if we're gonna wind up there, you're you're correct. Okay. Um, if we go back to uh, something like this, five g equals twenty. We know that uh, if we take five g and we divide it by five, well, five divided by five is what again? Five divided by five. Spit it out, we'll be done. One. One times g uh, is just g. Right, so we have, uh, we found what we wanted. So if we come over here, we have 8 fifths times x. Right? If we have a number times x, we could always divide by that same number. Now the nice thing on this side is that 8 fifths divided by 8 fifths, I don't really even have to do any math at all. It looks like kind of a, a complicated problem, 8 fifths divided by 8 fifths. But 8 fifths divided by 8 fifths is something divided by itself. And what do you get when you divide something by itself? You divide 5 by 5, 4 by 4, 2 by 2, divide 8 fifths by 8 fifths. What do you get when you divide something by itself, right? 1. 1, always. You divide x by x, you get 1. If you divide something by itself, you're dividing something into uh, that many groups. So in each group, there's going to be one thing. By something by itself, we always get one. So this is one. So we don't have to worry about like doing the arithmetic on that. But we have to do the same thing on both sides. Okay. So now I have this problem of four fifteenths divided by eight fifths. How do I divide something by a fraction? <coughs> divide by a fraction. Bridget? Multiply. Multiply. Divide by the reciprocal. The reciprocal of what? The reciprocal of the thing you're dividing by. Yeah. You're dividing by a fraction, multiply by the reciprocal of the fraction. So take 4 fifteenths and <coughs> multiply by the reciprocal of 8 fifths, which is 5 eighths. Okay. On this side, we've got 1 times x. That's great. On this side, we just need to clean it up and figure out what number we're looking at. Um, 4 can cross cancel with 8, and we get 2, 5, 15, there's 3. So both of these have been canceled. We're just with, left with 1 times 1. Here we have 3 times 2. So x equals 1 over 6. Okay. So Sarah, at the, uh, at the beginning of her problem, said multiply by 5 eighths. Okay. Because she recognizes that a, another way to take 8 fifths and using math turn it into 1 is to multiply it by its, its multiplicative inverse. Right? We talked about that. Multiply it uh, by its reciprocal, and it'll uh, cause it to be, if we multiply this by uh, 5 over 8, then we could either cancel out the 8s and the 5s, or we get 40 over 40, and that's just 1. Okay. So maybe from experience, I mean, it was just a, a great uh, idea that she had. She decided to multiply by 5 eighths. And if you, if, you're if you try to divide by fractions enough, right, you see a fraction times x, if you do that enough and you try to divide, and, and then you go through the step of multiplying by the reciprocal, uh, maybe after four or five times that, you'll say, uh, I'm going to divide by the, the fraction. So why don't I just go ahead and multiply by the reciprocal and stuff? Okay. Either way you do it, as long as you do it correctly, uh, it all works out. Let's just kind of sum some of this stuff up. Uh, the 
I have a, a number, let's say a number times x equals If we have something times x, how are we going to counteract that multiplication by that number? How are we going to cause that to be a 1 rather than that number 1 times x? If it was 2x equals 20, what would you do to counteract that 2? Divide by 2. If we divide this side by 2, we get 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 times x is just x. On this side, we divide by 2. 20 divided by 2 is 10. If we had 5x equals 20, how would we counteract that 5? Let's get it to be not 5x, but 1x. Divide by 5. Divide by 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 1 times x is just x. Divide by 5, and we get 4. So whatever that coefficient is, okay, we talked about the coefficient of the number times x, the number times the variable. Um, how am I going to cancel out that number? How do we do it with 2? How do we do it with 5? How are we going to do it with any number that we see there? Yeah? Divide that by that number, right? And that number divided by that number will be 1. And this number over here, 20 divided by whatever, right? We could, we could substitute 2 in there, 5 in there, 3, 17, whatever that number is divide that coefficient so that that coefficient divided by itself will be 1, and we'll just have 1 times x. Uh, if we had x plus some number equals, say, just make it up here, 17. Um, well, I only want x. I don't want x plus some other number. I don't want x plus some more is 17. I want x is something, right? I want to know what this side, what, what five less than this side is worth. Because this is five too much. Five more than what I want. So we're gonna take five away from that side, leaving just an x. We're leaving x plus nothing. And on this side we subtract five, and we get 12. x is 12. So if we subtract a number, we're gonna add it to both sides so that that negative plus the positive is nothing, and on the other side it's whatever it turns out to be. So what we'd like to have in the end on the other side is 1 times our variable plus nothing else is equal to the solution. That's what we want to wind up with. So Now that's going to take us to two-step equation. Now, it's not just subtract something from both sides, not just multiply by something on both sides, not just divide both sides by something. Um, that would be a couple of steps. So, let's see how we are at that. So, in um, 3.2, let's start with the uh, first. times the thing that we want to know, that unknown quantity x, plus 7 more is equal to 19. So how do we figure out what that one of those x is for? So nothing else added on.
good. This, uh, just by walking around, I see this can be where we can get into some trouble. Right? Um, and solving these equations is not about doing the right thing in the right order. Right? All this concentration is given to the rightness of every step that I take. The only right thing you can do is the same thing to both sides. And when you do the same thing to both sides, do it correctly. Even if you do the same thing on both sides, if you do it incorrectly, it's just as bad as if you had just added five to one side and added three to the other side and made it completely unbalanced. Okay? What you're trying to do, if, if you're trying to combine numbers in ways that they don't, they don't combine, if you're trying to divide, ways, divide stuff in ways that they don't divide, if you're trying to divide just part of one side by something, it's just not going to work. Okay? Um, so let's first go through some ways that are uh, misconceptions. I believe strongly, and it's back to the <coughs> research, that if we look at our misconceptions first, and if I happen to grab your misconception and display it, uh, and you say, yes, yeah, that's, that's what I thought I was supposed to do, and I realize, oh, it's, I'm not supposed to do that. It actually is more likely to make a change in your mind, in your brain, uh, that you'll remember. Like, oh, I, I remember. I'm not supposed to do that, and here's why. Okay, so here's one thing um, about subtract three from both sides. Can I subtract three from both sides? Can I subtract three from both sides? Jada, can I? Can you justify that? No, you can't? Can you subtract three from both sides? Um, I'm just doing this, but three minus three equals zero, and zero times well, there's, there's some, some logic there, too. Um, and I'll, I'll come back around to that. I'll come back around to that. Um, that's a good point. But again, can you subtract three from, can I subtract three from both sides? No. No, you can't. Because three is multiplying with x, so you have to divide both sides by three. Great point. But... I'm not asking if I can subtract 3 from 3x. I'm asking can I subtract 3 from both sides of the equation. Yeah? I can do anything I want to both sides, right? So it's not about this, that this step is, is, is incorrect or what I'm about to show you is incorrect because you can't subtract 3 from both sides. It, it comes down to you can't subtract 3 from 3x in the way that you want it to work, OK? So a lot of good points have been made. Here's, here's what you want to do. Here's what the person doing this problem wants to have happen. They want this to go away, This just this number. They just want this number to go away, okay? This is not a mathematical idea. They just want the number to go away. And they get x plus 7 equals uh, 14, no, not 14, uh, 16. And then they proceed to subtract 7 from both sides. Okay. Now, if subtracting three from both sides caused that to happen, then that would be great. But let's see why that can't work. Okay. Let's start with what Robin said. What you're trying to do is, is uh, if we isolate what you're trying to do, is 3x minus 3. Okay? 3x minus 3. Even if you could do this. Even if you could take 3 away from that 3 just by subtracting the number 3, well, what 3 minus 3 is is 0. And what's happening here? This thing is being multiplied by x. So we get 0x. And then the x would just be eliminated. That's not at all what we wanted to do. Okay. Now, of course, this does not equal 0x. You can't just subtract the number 3 from 3x. Right? For the, the simplest reason, they are not like terms. One is a variable, right? It's a, it's a constant times x, uh, and x is to the first power. And three is a constant. You're trying to subtract a constant from a variable. Uh, and just subtracting this three from that three is just wishful thinking. Like there's, there's not really any way for me to talk about it or uh, to suggest what's going on exactly. It just can't be done. Um, it's, it's an impossibility. Now, the person who might try this is 
you know, bad at math or anything like that. They're just, they're not taking it slow enough. They're not thinking about what they're doing. You take 3x and you minus 3, if you really think about that, I think you'll realize that it th th doesn't come of anything. There's nothing new to write down. 3x minus 3 is as simple as you can write this. 3x minus 3 is 3x minus 3. I'd have to know what x was before I could subtract 3 from this quantity. Right? Multiplication before subtraction. Okay? For order of operations is another reason why we're not going to be able to do that. Um, here's another one. This is what I see all the time. Okay? Uh, well, we know that we can't subtract 3 from 3x and get x. All right, we realize that. Okay, so we know we're supposed to divide by 3. So we get x is equal to, well, x plus 7 is equal to 19 over 3. Okay, keep in mind I'm showing you something that's incorrect. Right, so the idea that you should divide 3x by 3 that's a sound idea, right? 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 1 times x is x, so that's great. Um, does anybody see the mistake that's being made here? What's that? Well, that doesn't mean it's a mistake, right? Because maybe the answer is some weird fraction that, you know, is divisible, divisible by 3 even. That's that's not necessarily telling us uh, that we're wrong. Sometimes it can indicate like, whoa, I got 19 over 2. That's a weird answer. And I know they're not making these problems too difficult, so maybe I'll go back and check my work. But again, that's not necessarily correct. Yeah, Sarah? The steps are wrong. What steps? <coughs> It'd be easier if you subtracted 7 first uh -huh. from 7, and then subtract 7 uh -huh. from 19, and okay. then divide by 3. Good. And I like the words you used here would be easier. More correct? No, but easier. Okay? Because what actually, if you were to take the first step of dividing by 3, what would actually happen right now would just be more difficult, not wrong. You just want to get the 7 out of the way before you start using like the 3x and stuff. Good. It would be easier to get the 7 out of the way before you start dividing, because here's the truth about it. Uh, let's, let's look at. We'll cover this up. Okay, if we're going to divide by 3, we're going to divide by 3 or we're going to do it properly. Right? So if I divide this side by 3, think about that. I'm taking this side, this side, the whole thing, everything about this right side, we're dividing by 3. Okay? And if we're going to do the same thing to both sides, then what should we do to the other side entirely? We should divide that side by 3. Have we divided this side by 3? This entire side? We have? By dividing just this by 3, we would divide the entire thing by 3? No, we've only divided a select piece of it by 3. And these aren't smart bombs here. We have to divide the whole thing by 3. The whole side. Okay? We're looking at one third of the right side versus one third of the left side. That maintains the equality. That keeps the scales balanced. Okay? If we look at a third of this, and then a third of part of this plus the other part unchanged, that's not equal. Those two sides are no longer equal if you only divide some of it by 3. Let me show you what this looked like if we did do it correctly. Because okay? now it's OK. We divide both sides by 3. You can do anything you want as long as you do it to both sides and you do it properly. Well, if I divide both of these by 3, then I have to divide this by 3, and I have to divide this by 3. 3x three divided by 3, that's great. We like that. 7 divided by 3, that's not so great. Let's see what's going to happen now. Um, we've got 3x divided by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. So we get x. Plus 7 thirds equals 19 thirds. Well, that's, it's got fractions in it. So it's not too bad. How would we get x by itself now? How, what are we going to eliminate now? Danielle? Yeah, the thing that I want is having 7 thirds added to it. So I know how much the thing that I want plus 7 thirds more is worth. But I don't want that 7 thirds. I would like just x by itself. So I'm going to counteract that addition of 7 thirds by subtracting 7 thirds. And 19 
Uh, we have 19 thirds minus 7 thirds. They already have common denominators, so that's fine. We can subtract those and then write up with 12 thirds, which simplifies to 4. So, of course, we've, we've done everything correctly. We've, we've done uh, mathematically everything correctly. So, of course, we're going to get the same answer as somebody who did it some other way and did it correctly as well. But what Sarah said is true. It's easier if, it's easier if before you start dividing both sides by stuff, if you get all that other stuff that you would have to divide also, you get that out of the way. You just get it off of that side. Okay. So, again, not incorrect to divide both sides by 3, it's fine, but it would be easier if we said, well, I would like to divide by 3, but I don't want to divide 7 by 3, so I will subtract 7 from both sides. And now I have 3x equals 12. Right, 3x plus nothing else, so 3x and then divide both sides by 3, and we get x is equal to 4. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 1 times x is x. So what I would prefer is, is not that you know exactly the right thing, the right things to do at the right time, but that you recognize that, that if I'm going to do something, I do it to both sides. And if I choose to divide by 3, at the beginning, I'm just making a little more work for myself, right? It's not about what's correct. It's not that you're wrong for doing this. It's that you did a, a little bit of a longer way than you, than you could have. You could have done it more easily. Um, so that it becomes about the ease of the process and not what's right. The only thing that you can do wrong is not do the same thing to both sides. Okay? Or if you're doing the same thing to both sides, to do the same thing to both sides incorrectly. So let's uh, start with another one. Let's give that one a go. Um, Twenty-five. I saw like a huge improvement from the one just before this, number three, to now number five. Uh, and, and I hope it's because you're thinking about getting the quantity by itself and doing that the easiest way as possible while doing the same thing on both sides correctly. Not okay. So I got a number times a variable uh, minus a number. So first I have to you know do this step, and then next I have to do this step. Um, well, certainly are the steps that most people will follow because they're the easiest, but they're not the only ones that you could do. I could make this into a hundred step problem by doing crazy things to both sides, but if I keep doing them correctly, it's gonna stick, like the actual value of that D is gonna be preserved, and if I, if I do it all sorts of crazy ways, I'll still come out with the correct answer. Uh, it would've just been by uh, a lot of hassle. Okay. Um, so the simplest way would be, we, we see the 7, we like to divide the 7, uh, and, and cause that to be a 1. 7 divided by 7 is 1. 
But then we realize if we divide this by 7, right, if we want to divide this up by 7, we, we don't have any way to just divide a piece of a number by 7. Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense, right, because this whole quantity is a number. So we would have to divide both sides, or the, the entire thing by 7. I don't really want to divide by 7, divide 1 by 7 if I can avoid it. I don't really want to bring fractions into this unless I can, uh, uh, unless I have to. So if we were to uh, eliminate that negative 1, negative 1 plus 1 is 0. Now 7d plus 0 is just 7d, and on this side we have 14. Now the dividing uh, idea is a, it's a good one, it's an easy one, right? It's an easy step to take. Uh, and d is equal to 2, and divide by 7 on both sides. So let me, I'm just going to make up a problem, I'm going to show you, like, right, maybe both ways are, are equally as easy, because if we had something like, um, 4x plus 8 equals 32. Okay. Well, I could subtract 8 on both sides and divide by 4, certainly. I could also divide by 4 on both sides, and that turns out not to be very difficult because everything happens to be divisible by 4. So if I divide 4x by 4, I get x. If I divide 8 by 4, I get 2. I divide 32 by 4, uh, 32 by 4, I get 8. Okay. So that one step of dividing everything by 4, it turns out it wasn't difficult. It didn't make the problem more of a hassle because it didn't cause anything to be fractions because it went even, evenly into everything that was in the equation. And then we subtract 2 on both sides, and x is 6. So. I've been taught by people, I've seen people taught by others in a way that was do it this way because this way is right, or at least that's the idea that the student got. Um, it's the idea that I got being taught. And I don't want to leave you with that idea that there's a right way and a wrong way to solve an equation. The only wrong thing you could do is, I guess, avoid doing any algebra and just guess and check. Okay? I would say, that might get you the right answer, but I would say it's just a, a really bad approach for the long term. And the, the, like I said, the only thing you can do this wrong is to not do the same thing to both sides. To make both sides, to, to, to make it so that both sides aren't equal anymore, that would be the wrong thing. Okay. And then just remember, combine like terms. Right? If you can't combine these terms, they're not like terms, don't try and put them together. 3x minus 3 is not x. 3x minus 3 is 3x minus 3. There's nothing to do there. Right? Okay, so let's let's throw some more um, more challenge here, more challenge on <coughs> problems. Um, <coughs> another ten. <coughs> being taken, but again, um, make sure the steps you're taking are not because you feel like you're being told those are the steps you have to take, but you feel like you've come to the conclusion that they're most efficient. All right? um, so I probably, I saw most people, subtract 13 on both sides, and we get 4 equals w over 5, multiply both sides by 5. Uh, we know that that's going to give us w, and on this side, that'll give us 12. People who were showing their work, that's what I saw. That was good. Just to, again, highlight the fact that we can do whatever we want, as long as it's correctly done and done uh, equally on both sides, I'm going to do it differently. Um, I know that if I had w over 5 and I wanted to get just w, I would multiply by 5. So I'm going to multiply by 5. But what I realize is I have to multiply both sides by 5, okay? So we'll multiply this side by 5, the whole thing, and multiply this by 5. Now how do I multiply this side by 5? How do you multiply this quantity by 5? You put 5 over 1. 5 over 1 would, would help, right? Distributed. The distributive property, right? I have to multiply it. Not just by this this thing, 
but by this thing as well. It will distribute it to both. Okay. We talked about the distributive property um, using rectangles. And, um, so yeah, we should know that if I multiply this whole side by 5, then this has to go multiplied by 5, and so does this. So uh, 5 times 70, 17. Five over one times w over five plus uh, we can just do five times thirteen over three over one. Um, so we get eighty-five equals. Well, we know five divided by five is one, so we get w plus <coughs> uh, five times six seventy-five. No, sixty-five. Yeah. Okay. And then we subtract sixty-five from both sides, and no surprise, we get twenty. Do the same thing to both sides, and we do it correctly. We, w will have to be what it is, right? So no matter what we do to it, as long as it's correct, eventually the, the, the value of W will be restored, and it'll be correct whatever you do, as long as you do it correctly. to do something like, uh, I see there's 13k here, and, and uh, usually, I, let's say I had 13k minus something else, then I might add that thing to both sides, right? So I might add 5k to both sides, if I'm going to try to do that. Uh, or maybe I see negative 5k is, is having 13k added to it, so maybe subtract 13k from both sides, right? Try to keep that k by itself. Um, keep in mind that what we're trying to do is, is isolate the variable, okay? And another way to say that is to get one of those, 1k or 1x or whatever the value is, whatever the variable is, to get one of those on one side by itself. If we subtract, say, 13k from both sides, subtract 13k from both sides, then, then that does just give us negative 5k over here. But on the other side, it gives us negative 32 minus 13k equals negative 5k. And then even if we divide by negative 5 on both sides, it just, it's going to cause a mess. And here's the other thing. If you get k, like this k, isolated by itself, you have a k over here, right? What good is that? Because then like, to figure out what k is, you would have to know what k is. Like you have to plug in k to figure out what k is, right? So that, I'm, I'm sure you figured out, like, that kind of leads you down a dead-end road there. But the solution to this is, is pretty simple. Like we have 13 Ks, we have negative 5 Ks, so what do we do with them? Okay, you can put parentheses around. Don't need parentheses, but you certainly can. You're grouping them together. They are? Like terms. Like terms, yeah. They're a unit of, of Ks, right? So 13 K minus 5 K is 8 K. Negative 32 on that side, divide by 8, divide by negative 32. Divide by eight. Negative three. Negative four is k. All right. Have a good day, everybody.